Hello, everyone. Glad to be here at SLOConf 2022. And today I'd like to talk to you about open telemetry and the open source vision for unified observability. And let's start with a question. How many tools does a company use on average to collect telemetry data from its systems? Think about logs, metrics, traces, front-end app, back-end app, infrastructure, cloud services, open source, whatever. Well, it appears that organizations use between five to 10 different tools to collect telemetry from its systems. Five to 10. You can reduce it to one unified standard platform. Here's the story of open telemetry. My name is Dotan Horvitz. I'm a principal developer advocate at logs.io. At Logs.io, we provide cloud-native observability platform that's based on popular open source tools. I've been around uh, as a developer, a solutions architect, a product manager. I'm a, an advocate of open source. I'm, I co-organize the local CNCF chapter in Tel Aviv, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. I uh, also run the Open Observability Talks podcast. If you uh, like this topic, do check it out. Any general. You can find me everywhere at Horvitz. And let's talk about the vision of unified observability. We all know that uh, observability is about uh, understanding the state of our system based on telemetry data. And the vision talks about unified observability across the different signal types, uh, logs, metrics, traces, uh, and also across different sources. Think about your front-end code, your back-end code, open source tools, cloud services, you name it, just fusing all of these uh, together to gain unified observability. That's the vision. The reality, however, is much more fragmented. Uh, and that's exactly because we use so many tools for observability. And each tool and each vendor has its own proprietary APIs and SDKs for instrumenting the application, and then proprietary agent, daemon, collector for uh, you know, collecting and running all sorts of aggregations and, and processing and sampling, and then proprietary protocol and data model to uh, transmit the telemetry to the analytics backend. And all of that is not only operational headache, it's also it also creates tight coupling between the telemetry collection and the telemetry storage and analysis backend. And most importantly, it makes it very, very difficult to correlate uh, the data and gain that unified observability across these data silos to track our SLOs. That's what open telemetry comes to solve. Open telemetry, or OTEL as it's nicknamed, is uh, an observability platform framework for generating and capturing telemetry data from cloud native applications across traces, metrics, and logs. So across all the observability pillars, uh, one framework to rule them all, if you'd like. Uh, it's an incubating project under the CNCF. Uh, in fact, it's a, a merge of open tracing and open census, if, if you're familiar with these projects. And I'm glad to say that open telemetry is highly adopted by all the major vendors, the cloud vendors, the monitoring tools, everyone is aligning with open telemetry. It's also highly active. Uh, it's today the second most active uh, project in the CNCF, in the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, second after Kubernetes itself. So it's really uh, set out to be a de facto standard. And now that we understand that, let's dive deeper into what Open telemetry provides us. As we said, uh, you get a unified set of uh, vendor agnostic APIs, SDKs, and tools for generating and collecting telemetry data, and then exporting into uh, whichever analysis tool of your choice. Open telemetry doesn't provide the tool and doesn't take any stake in the backend tool of your choice. Uh, and the components, the main components of open telemetry are first and foremost the open telemetry specification, which provides the cross-language requirements, the API spec, the SDK spec, the data spec for rep 
representing for traces, metrics, and logs. Then per programming language, you get one API and one SDK uh, that meets the standards that we talk about, the specification for that specific programming language. And as well, you get uh, auto-instrumentation agents, you get uh, integrations with popular frameworks for that specific language, uh, and, and so on to make uh, life easier when you uh, instrument your application. That's the APIs and SDKs. Then you have the open telemetry collector that uh, essentially collects, processes, and exports uh, the telemetry to the analysis backend. And it's built like a processing data processing pipeline. So you have receivers in multiple protocols. So if you have a Kafka in your system and you want to collect the metrics, you use a Kafka receiver. If your application emits traces in a Jaeger format, you use a Jaeger receiver and so on. Just plug in the relevant receiver. Then you choose the processes that are relevant for you for uh, you know, batch, uh, process, aggregate, uh, sampling, everything that you need to do, and then use the exporter depending on the backend that you want to send it to. So you want to send it to AWS X-Ray, you want to send it to uh, Azure Monitor, you want to send it to Dynatrace, Datadog, uh, Sumo Logic, Logs.io, whichever, just use the relevant exporter. That's the Open Telemetry Collector. And the last component is uh, the Open Telemetry Protocol, or OTLP. Uh, which is a general purpose telemetry data processing uh, protocol. Uh, it can be used to send the uh, telemetry from the SDK to the collector. It can be used between the collector and the backend or, or any other. It's really general purpose. It's uh, built on gRPC and HTTP 1.1. It used binary uh, protobuf encoding. Um, and again, it's unified across logs, metrics, and traces. One important note is that you don't have to use the entire bundle, all the components uh, of OpenTelemetry together. You can use, uh, uh, you can, as we said, you saw the collector supports multiple protocols, not just OTLP, so you don't have to use OTLP. Uh, you can use uh, the SDK without the collector. You can use the collector without the SDK. So it's really loosely coupled. However, it aims to provide a holistic framework to enable uh, uh, this approach and the, the correlation across the telemetry. And now that we understand in very high level the main components of what Open Telemetry provides, let's talk about the state of the project in a, in a high level. And for that, I'd like to break it down by the state of each signal. The most advanced of which is traces, uh, which is already stable as of uh, last year, 2021. Uh, stable is the equivalent of GA in CNCF terms. Uh, so it means that you it's ready for production. It gets it comes with uh, you know backwards compatibility, API uh, stability guarantees, and so on and so forth. And you have multiple client libraries in many languages that are already version 1.0 or above. So the tracing implementation is complete. That's for traces. Uh, next up is metrics that's expecting stability uh, this year uh, in 2022. Uh, some pieces are already stable, like the API and the protocol, uh, so it's really uh, up and coming. And uh, the farthest away is logs that is still experimental, and uh, some of the specifications are still in draft mode. So uh, it would be interesting to see if we can uh, reach stability uh, this year or not. Now that we understand that, a word about how to get started with Open Telemetry, especially seeing the, all the different uh, specifications and signals and uh, projects. How do you approach it? And I would suggest starting by knowing your stack and know your SLOs. Ask yourselves these four basic questions. In your system, which programming languages are being used? That will determine the APIs and SDKs that you would need to use, and maybe the frameworks and auto-instrumentation agents. Then which signals uh, you, you want to ingest, logs, metrics, traces, and in which protocols, especially uh, if you're a brownfield project and you need to uh, collect something that is already existing and you need to conform to that uh, protocol. That will determine your receivers that you need to use. And then which 
analytic tools you're going to use to monitor your SLOs. That will determine the exporters that you will need to use. And once you understand that, then check out the status of each of these components and uh, follow the references. There's a very useful uh, status page, opentelemetry.io slash status. That's a very good starting point for that. And also check out the guide to open telemetry that I wrote. Uh, you have the uh, short link here, or you can just Google open telemetry guide or open telemetry tutorial. Uh, there you will find each and every one of these components in far greater detail, and also uh, useful sub-guides for per programming language and other components, and uh, useful links to drill down per your specific path of relevance in your stack. Uh, so do check it out. And uh, remember, this is an open source project, so do get involved uh, and help us all uh, make it really a de facto standard that can unify us all. If you have any feedback about uh, this talk or about this, uh, the open telemetry guide or anything else, feel free to reach out to me at Horowitz. I'm Dotan Horowitz, and thank you very much for listening. Mm -hmm.